Hi, welcome to Heal Body, Mind and Spirit. My name is Dermot Farrell and today we're talking about strategies and supplements which you can use for gut health issues. This is the second part of a video on this subject. In the previous video, if you haven't seen it, I give you an overview of why you get gut health issues and the rough speaking, the roughly speaking, the, 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 the strategy that we have to take. Now there's three steps that we really have to take to improve our gut health and the good news is unless you've got some really big physiological damage to your gut you can you can probably get a, either a full cure or certainly a very big improvement in gut health issues now before i get on to those three strategies which are detox rebalance and rebuild um i think it's important to do uh have a look at the basics so we should have certain good habits good habits for example are chewing your food properly my brother, for example, when I was uh, in my teens, he could take a digested biscuit about two and a half inches in diameter and he could swallow them one go and look deeply entertaining. But think about it. How you digest food is your salivary glands, they release enzymes which help break the food down, goes into the stomach where the hydrochloric acid breaks it down the food further, then it goes into the small intestines where it's actually digested. So when we gulp down our food, the food is not really digested at all in the mouth. And then in stomach, the stomach tends to empty in about 20 minutes. So the stomach doesn't really get much of an opportunity to do much with the food. And then you get lumps of food going into the, uh, into the intestines. Also things like eating too much of one type of food, where the and a lot of it can cause a blo blockage. Uh, for example, red meat is slow to digest. And if you're eating loads of red meat every day, there's probably a lot of it just sitting there in your intestines, festering and so on, which is full of toxins. Okay, it's not good. Uh, the other thing is uh, water. Don't drink water during your meal. Don't drink water just before or just after. Give it 20 minutes either side because your stomach has hydrochloric acid. If you put water in, you got dilute hydrochloric acid, which means that when the chyme, which is the stuff that the food breaks down to in about 20 minutes in your, in your stomach, and then it goes into the intestines, it's already you know, fairly liquidy. So if you drink a lot of water, you're diluting. Now you might be saying, but I'm thirsty. If you're thirsty, drink milk or any kind of beverage that doesn't involve water. So no sodas, no soft drinks, no water. You could take milk. Milk's the base. It's not going to disimprove. I don't think it will seriously disimprove the action of the stomach. Okay. Uh, when I was a kid growing up, I used to drink milk at our meals and it always felt fine. But avoid the water. Other things is I see people you will know, be very stressed and they're eating food at their desk while working and bent over eating the food in a very stressed state walking while eating food think about how what opportunity are you giving your intestines or sorry your stomach to break down the food when you're walking talking on the phone while walking while eating food and just gulping the food down so these are some bad habits other bad habit is eating very infrequently which then has this, the body's all out of balance or eating huge amounts of food. Most people these days eat way too much food and uh, especially things like eating a, a big meal before going to bed at night. It's just a really bad idea. It's going to cause a uh, blockage in the system. Your body's not going to process the food during the night. You're going to wake in the morning hungry because you have no nutrients because you weren't processing that food. You're going to eat more food and create more blockage. So, you know, again, try and be commonsensical. And another thing is try and be aware of eating the food. I mean, how often have you taking the last bite of cake or the last spoon of ice cream or the last square of chocolate to suddenly think that's so tasty. It's always the tastiest because you've probably been daydreaming while eating the rest of it. There's a tendency, especially in today's society, to do be like a pig in a, in a you know, pig trough and just like just grabbing all the food and drawing it down there. And that's not good. You're not giving your body a chance. So try and eat slowly, try and chew your food, and try and be in remembrance of the food and appreciate it. Enjoy the taste, enjoy eating, rather than just gulping food down. And that's why I see a lot of us these days, we're just gulping down in this desperate frenzy to feed ourselves, and then we end up eating too much. So there's so many different variations there. Also try and eat more or less in daylight hours. The body's designed mainly to work digestively in daylight hours, and once it gets dark outside, the body tends to shut down. I know you might be saying, well, midwinter, maybe a start at 5 o'clock, but yeah, I mean, try and do most of your eating between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. I know it might be necessary to eat afterwards. You could take it up to maybe 9 p.m., but this thing of eating at 1 o'clock in the morning or 10, 11 o'clock at night is a bad idea. And also for people who are, say, you know, either party goers coming on the way back from a party, eating in a takeaway at 1 in the morning, it's a bad idea. 
uh, people who are night workers, maybe they come home at 3 in the morning, they want to have a big meal, don't have a big meal at 3 o'clock in the morning. Have a small little meal with a lot of protein and then, uh, you know, in the morning when you get up at 11 o'clock or something, have a big breakfast. Try not to stress your body out those things. They're just the basics. Now let's get on to the detox, rebalance and rebuild. Basically, your gastrointestinal tract is like a conveyor belt. Okay, it keeps moving. Food has to come in, food has to go out. And it's several thousand calories a day, which means quite a lot of food. You know, depending on what food you're eating, most of us are probably eating a couple of pounds of food a day. I'm not sure exactly how much, but quite a lot. And especially for taking carbohydrates, we end up having to take a lot of water with that. Plus you need water for digestion. So food and liquids, we're taking a lot in per day. So, uh, once things stop working, once there's a blockage somewhere, the blockage builds and toxins build up. And there's a couple of variations. One is actually blocked intestines, in which case you're going to have to unblock them. You can use things like enemas, clonic irrigation. I'm not a big fan of that. I think for the people, from the point of view of moving those blocks, I think a great way is water therapy. Check it out, another video, uh, I'll link it down below uh, on water therapy. You just drink water every day, a lot of it in a short period of time. And it's a great way of naturally irrigating the intestines, naturally cleaning out the intestines without putting pressure on them or the embarrassment of filling with tubes and sticking them up your bottom. Um, other things which are, are good are uh, things like wheatgrass, for example. Wheatgrass is uh, high in fiber uh, and that can often help move a lot of uh, waste deposits. Uh, eat a big salad every day like a big salad, like a one pound heavy weight amount of salad, like loads of lettuce, uh, green vegetables, like a big salad. And uh, again, all those fibrous, um, cruciferous uh, green vegetables, they're full of fiber. So you suddenly give yourself 20 grams of fiber and everything just moves out, as long as you're hydrating yourself with water as, as, as well. So drink plenty of water, Take a salad every day, wheatgrass is good, water therapy is good for the big deposits. Also from the point of view of toxins, what's great for moving toxins is wheatgrass. Wheatgrass will get rid of viruses, bacteria and funguses. And when people have gut problems, they tend to get a lot of fungal infections. So we need to get those funguses out there, so it's very important. Um, other ones for cleaning out the system is very good is aloe vera. That's another very good kind of cleaner outer of the system for, for detoxing. Uh, another thing you can do is a little bit intermittent fasting. Take a couple of days a week where you don't eat that much. You go maybe 16 hours without food, once or twice a week, just to help your body and take a lot of water, clean itself out, okay? Other general detoxifiers, green tea is a fantastic general detoxifier. A lot of people drink green tea because it's kind of hip, it's trendy, it's cool. If you go into an office these days, everybody always gives you a cup of green tea. If you drink three or four or five cups of green tea a day, it will have a big detoxing effect. So from the detoxing point of view, they are the way to go because you need to get those toxins out, get that junk out there because that junk is causing a lot of problems including autoimmune conditions, food sensitivity issues and so forth. Um, also um, regarding detox, there are side effects of detox like you might get headaches, some nausea, etc, diarrhea possibly. So you know Take it easy with the detox, but realize that as the crap is coming out of you, literally the crap, the toxins, not just the feces, but the toxins are coming out of you, on the way out they tend to, you know, give you a hard time on the way out. So, but you can take it at your leisure, but detoxing is a part. This next thing is rebalancing. Rebalancing is important. There's many things you can do to rebalance. Like I say, the good food habits is, is, is one thing that's important. Um, other things are good, for example, ginger. Ginger is a great way of... Uh, toning up the uh, the intestinal, there's the, sorry, the stomach system. Uh, ginger has been proven scientifically to empty the stomach contents very quickly. If you take about 1.2 grams of ginger an hour before food in a study, they found that people were, the food was evacuating the stomach within 13 minutes instead of 20 minutes. So it's a lot faster. Uh, ginger is also a very good uh, tonic uh, for health. So I mean that's uh, a good one for rebalancing. Aloe vera is a great rebalancer as well. Wheatgrass, because it kicks out all those viruses and funguses and so on, it's a great one. Apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is an acid. 
So one of the theories, I mean, the Western theory regarding, say, uh, acid reflux heartburn is that uh, you have uh, some problem with the acid going into the esophagus for a whole variety of reasons. But from a comprehensive medical point of view, the general popular view, I'm not sure if it's 100% right, but this is the popular view, is that there's actually too little stomach acid because of the imbalances. And then the stomach acid comes and spits and sports and some of it ends up in the esophagus. So apple cider vinegar being an acid itself actually helps top up the acid levels in the stomach. Also, apple cider vinegar breaks down into a base. Wheatgrass is also base. If you take wheatgrass and apple cider vinegar, although the apple cider vinegar is making the stomach more um, acidic, in general they're making the body more base. And what that does is it kills off funguses. So things like candida, for example. Another advantage of apple cider vinegar is that it kills off nasty bacteria, but it's good for things like lactobacillus, which love an acidic environment. And those guys eat fungus for breakfast. Things like candida, they love eating candida, for example. Okay, so it's a great way of getting all that kind of killing the funguses out of your system, getting your system to work uh, better. Okay, then we're getting to rebuilding. Rebuilding L-glutamine, for example. Let's say you got damage to your intestines, damage to your stomach wall. L-glutamine is a very popular amino acid. About 40% of the nitrogen in your blood is L-glutamine. About 60% of your skeletal muscle is L-glutamine. L-glutamine helps people on a, weight, on a weight loss diet to maintain lean body mass while losing fat, but also helps rebuild uh, the stomach walls, intestines, and so on and so forth. Also, from a rebuilding point of view, if you've got a lot of stomach acid problems, you can try hydrochloric acid uh, supplementation like Beltane, B-E-L-T-A-I-N, hydrochloric acid supplementation for some people. But I would stick with something like apple cider vinegar first and then maybe using something like that <laughs> at a later stage. Um, other rebalancing ones for nausea would be peppermint tea. Peppermint is very good for uh, symptoms of nausea. Okay. So, I mean, this just gives you some ideas. There's many things I have mentioned, and there's, the list is as long as your arm, things you can take for your stomach. But I suppose, what's the big thing I want to come across here, the message I want to get in this video? Number one is, if you've got stomach health issues, use good eating habits in order to help your stomach, rather than abusing your stomach, like chewing your food, not drinking water during a meal, being in remembrance of your food, not being stressed, uh, eating, fairly frequently, not too much, not too little, balanced approach. The other thing is, is, if you do have good health issues, the way to cope with them is detox, rebalance, and rebuild. They're the three teams that you have to work on. Now, you'll see a lot of stuff on the web where people talk about rebalancing things like in a seven day good program, the 28 day good program, etc. Um, you know, it's a bit of a con. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm releasing a book, it'll probably have the link down here in the next day or so on uh, gut health on Kindle. And there is like an appendix with a 28 gut health program. I put it in there basically because people like that sort of thing. But I'm not a big believer in, in, in cookie cutter programs. A program like a seven day protocol, 14, 28 day program, it's a great way of giving your, your, your gut a, a chance to clean out and reboot. But often what you're going to have to do with gut health issues is work at it over a period of weeks and months, sometimes a few years and slowly iron out the balances and also figure out what's causing problems and maybe avoiding certain foods. Um, you know, ideally, if your gut's working perfectly, you can eat just about anything. Um, but it's something, the good news, like I said earlier, is that pretty much most people can completely cure their gut health issues <coughs> or certainly see a radical improvement. But you need to be patient. Another thing I would advise is get yourself a journal and keep some notes of just different things you've changed and see what works and see what doesn't work. So, with a bit of uh, understanding of the concept, detox, rebuild, re rebalance, rebuild, and patience, application, a bit of note taking, you can work through it over a period of weeks or months. And just realize that that's why it's out of balance. Out of balance because of lifestyle and the foods we're eating, etc. And yeah, you can do a lot to improve it by taking that right approach, understanding the strategy, and applying yourself. You too can really improve or even cure good health issues. Okay, thanks for dropping by and have a nice day.